Math is a language. Just like a language helps us to understand uh, and to communicate and have ourselves understood, math helps us to understand subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, economics, and it's more of like, like a toolbox. Uh, using a toolbox, we can open up some sort of a gadget and see what's inside and understand it better. So math is a toolbox, a language that helps us to understand other things. If there has to be a definition of math, it has to be something like an abstraction of patterns. Abstraction means something that might not exist in the real world. First, let's talk about what are the main ideas behind math. The three main ideas behind math are numbers. First of all, numbers. Math is the abstraction of numbers. When I say uh, you have to count something, suppose you're counting chairs. So suppose there are five chairs. Then someone brings three more chairs. So we have eight chairs. And when you think about the number five, you're not thinking about chairs or tables. You're just thinking about five. It's an abstract idea. Although it came, first of all, from the concept of, suppose, counting uh, chairs or tables. But when we talk about eight or nine or ten, we're not talking about chairs or tables or anything. We're just talking about eight, nine, ten. That's it. It's, it's an abstract idea of that number. The second important idea is geometry, shapes. When we talk about shapes, we talk, we, it could be uh, 2D shapes, triangles, circles, rectangles. It can also be solids. It could be cylinders, cones, etc. When we say think of a circle, we're not talking about think of a specific circle. We're just talking about an idea of a circle. It doesn't have to be a circle in the real world. It's an abstract shape. Math deals with abstraction of shape. The third important idea in math, it's logic. Math helps us to logically solve problems and go through a problem step by step. And with that logic, uh, we can understand it better by using the concept of math. So the three ideas are numbers, shapes, and logic. So when you think about any math syllabus, uh, it has to have two parts. The first thing is the classical math. So, the classical math deals with, first of all, numbers. So, we have numbers. Now, numbers means you're counting. It could be whole numbers. It could be fractions. It could be decimals. And when you deal with different types of numbers, it could be a number that can be expressed with integers, like rational numbers, or it could be numbers that cannot be expressed with integers or whole numbers, irrational numbers. Then we have the operations like plus, minus, multiplication, division. So when we have these whole numbers and fractions and decimals, we have to multiply them with each other and know how to add them, subtract them and divide them. And when we do these calculations, there are important concepts of dealing with this type of numbers. We have percentages, we have ratios, and we have proportions of numbers. These are important fundamental concepts and how we deal with numbers and how we uh, manipulate numbers. We have to think about numbers as a collection of numbers because there can be different types of numbers. There can be odd numbers, even numbers, prime numbers, perfect squares. So we call them sets of numbers. So we have from these numbers the concept of sets. So sets of numbers. We can think about arrangement of numbers. How do we arrange numbers in a special way? We call it matrices of numbers. So we have matrices of numbers. It's an arrangement of numbers. If you want to know about how many people like a certain amount of candy, 
how do you know uh, if suppose a country has uh, 100 million people population how do you know what type of candy do they like it's not possible to ask everyone and find out what that works we can actually ask a very small number of people and from what they think we can assume that's exactly what a large number of people think about so when we deal with numbers as data trying to predict what others are thinking about we call it statistics of numbers so we have statistics so statistics is an important concept of numbers that tell us from a small group of number we can predict about a large group of number the opposite of statistics can be thought of as probability where probability we know everything about the whole thing but we now want to know a small amount of number for example uh, suppose in a bag you have 10 items you know everything about the entire bag now we want to know what is the chance of getting a small number of items for example a red item from that bag so we have probability so statistics and probability go hand in hand so statistics and probability tells us about numbers. Another important concept is geometry. So when we have geometry, we are talking about shapes and solids. So we have to know about the shapes, the common shapes like triangles and we have to understand how triangles work. First of all, it starts with a single line. That is the most, the basic shape is a point and when we join two points, it's a line. So from these we have shapes like triangles, rectangles, rhombuses, parallelograms and on and on. Then we have solids, 3D solids. They are 3D. They are not two dimensional. They are 3D. So we have solids. And we have to find relationships. How much space do they occupy? We call the space occupied by a shape, we call it an area. And the space occupied by a solid, we call that a volume. In geometry we also have to know about trigonometry it's a special study of circles and we can also call it the study of triangles after all trigonometry means three earth measurement trigonometry so we have trigonometry that helps us in this measurement of 2d and 3d shapes and solids and we have another important concept called vectors. Vectors tells us about space in one direction. Like how does a line work? And this is an important concept that later on helps in other topics like physics. How if something is moving in a straight line, how does, the, how does it work? So in geometric spatial relationship, we have vectors that helps us to know how something is working in a straight line. Now, Numbers can also be expressed in terms of an unknown number. How do you do? How do you deal with unknown numbers? An unknown number uh, can be uh, expressed in terms of a symbol like x. And dealing with these un unknown numbers, we have another branch what we call algebra. So we have algebra. So algebra particularly deals with unknown numbers. So this is also an important part of numbers. Expressions, how do you express the number with an unknown term? Uh, equations, we have to talk about also functions. So these are important concepts of algebra. The other part that we have is modern math. What we call modern math. Modern math primarily deals with two fundamental concepts coordinate or analytical geometry coordinate geometry and calculus these two are the topics that deal with modern math we can call classical math some sort of an applied math or general math and we can call modern math as a correct this modern math as pure math coordinate geometry combines the concept of algebra and tries to express algebraic expression using the algebraic expression to express geometric shapes so thus we have coordinate geometry so it combines algebra with geometry calculus is the study of change starts from motion so it actually started from uh, patterns of 
uh, study of astronomy, when we talk about calculus, we are studying change. Now, there are two branches of calculus. There is differential calculus. And we have integral calculus. Differential calculus tries to helps us to find uh, the gradient or the change. If distance is changing with time, we can call it velocity. If velocity is changing with time, we call it acceleration. So it helps us to find change in this way by breaking it down. Integration, on the other hand, tries to join it together. The fundamental rule of calculus states that integration is the opposite of differentiation. In modern math, we use some higher form of classical math, concepts like series. Series, where we want to find a list of numbers and how they would behave. Series can progress with a logic. It could be arithmetic series, it could be geometric series, it could be binomial series. Another higher form of number is some special numbers. When you multiply the same number over and over again, we get some sort of a uh, expression. We call it logarithm. For example, 2 to the power 3 equals to 8. We call 3 the logarithm of 2, base 2, and the value is 8. Trigonometry can represent an angle. That angle can be more than 360 degree. Usually, an angle is 360 degree. It looks like a circle, but in I, uh, in abstract trigonometry or arbitrary angle trigonometry, here we can have an angle more than 1000 degree also because we just keep circular, circling around that circle. It doesn't really matter. So we have called a concept trigonometric identities. So these are not actual geometry, trigonometry. These are about identities. So this classical and modern math together form syllabus.